असलम स्टूडेंट्स इस मॉड्यूल में आप कैनेडा से क्वींस यूनिवर्सिटी से प्रोफेसर टीना डासन की एक वीडियो टॉक देखेंगे डार्क साइड ऑफ सोशल एंटरप्राइज पे pleasure to talk about my research on social entrepreneurship and it builds on joint work with uh, Professor Peter Dayson and a graduate student Darren Kent both in the School of Business as well and uh, I'm going to talk about something that I'm quite cynical about which is the topic of social enterprise or social entrepreneuring and really focus on the dark side of social entrepreneurship now I have to say I've said already that I'm a cynic but I have to tell you why So social enterprises are sprouting up and they're coming up everywhere. And there's like fruit flies many of them because they're born to die, right? We have just such an abundance emerging all over the world. But the problem is is that uh we make an assumption that they're emerging for altruistic reasons, that there's some good involved here. The other thing is is that we're also very outcome focused. But yet our research evidence proving their outcome is very very limited in fact i can think of just a few social enterprises that are creating large big scale systemic change and in my opinion that's a problem because there's so many of them forming and so what i want to do is talk about three areas one is are these assumptions of altruism still warranted secondly how do we address the issues of the myth of impact and then finally three ways in which i believe the social enterprise agenda is becoming corrupted the first way is the advancement of ulterior motives the second is the exploitation for private gain and the third way and i find very very interesting is to explore the unintended negative consequences of doing good by a social enterprise. Okay, so those are the three areas that I'm going to focus on. Keep in mind that the rhetoric of people who do social entrepreneurship work is very very grand today and very very ambitious. And so it's against that backdrop that I urge you to consider the darker side of some of these issues and uh and things that we're going to talk about. So the first one is about the advancement of ulterior motives. So when I work with folks in government and private corporations one of the things that i repeatedly hear about is some of the old type of dialogue around greenwashing that used to occur when we talked about CSR so it's about ticking a box and not really giving much attention to the motives or the means by which we do it but ticking a box to say that the outcome's been achieved and in my opinion that's very problematic the second is that most of the problems that we face today and many of the solutions that are proposed come about from a sort of complex embeddedness of history tradition culture and we often ignore that a great example that i read about recently was on the formation of garrison communities in jamaica and this is where they set up social housing so what happens is politicians come together and they form unhealthy or maybe healthy robust alliances with criminal gangs and business entrepreneurs and what they decide to do is they set up social housing projects for people it looks like on the outcome side that it's actually doing some social good but then they control votes there's drug trafficking there's all kinds of other sort of uh, activities happening that we wouldn't really judge or evaluate as being prudent or successful and so we have to say why does this happen and it didn't happen overnight that a social entrepreneur came up with this great idea and said let's start a social housing scam but what's happened is is in post slavery days these communities evolved and now they're just taken for granted in the communities in which they're embedded and so we need to keep in mind the long sort of trajectory and history that causes these types of things to happen the other is that there's a huge amount of exploitation that occurs for private gain. And so we need to be asking our question whose interests are best being served when we set up and found social enterprises. 
You know, are we setting up the best interest of a community, or are we setting up the best interests of the people being served or the people providing the service or good? And I'll give you a, an interesting example. I was uh, recently at a meeting with a number of people from Queens and a number of people from the local community. And at that meeting, we were sitting around a table and people were talking about the issue of poverty and what we can do in the Kingston community about poverty. And someone jumped up from a local nonprofit and said, you can't talk about that topic. We do everything regarding poverty in Kingston. And a colleague sitting at the same table said, he chimed in, he said, I beg to differ. I think there's enough poor to go around for everyone. Okay? So think about that for a moment. Because a lot of times, nonprofits claim this space. And they claim it to slice up pieces of the pie. But is it really worth slicing it up? Or should we be thinking of broader, more holistic approaches to working together as opposed to having overlap of resources that are being spent to deal with a specific topic or issue? I'm going to turn now to five unintended negative consequences that I think are, are pretty interesting. One is that I think that doing social good can often have unforeseen circumstances. So I remember being told a story by Peter Block, who said that in New York City, they had created a social enterprise to help homeless men on the streets of New York. And could they create some type of program to get them off the streets with jobs in housing? In doing so, they launched a social enterprise. They were successful. The indigent homeless men were off the streets. But what happened after their success? One is that crime in those same neighborhoods escalated. The second was crimes against women also escalated because the mere presence of the men to begin with prevented a lot of this crime in the first place. So that's why I argue that we need to sort of look at a more holistic, systemic view of when you do social good in one arena, it actually may have a negative spillover effect in another, and that's something important for us to always uh, think about. The other thing I think is that social enterprises have to often make trade-offs in these choices between the social mission and their for-profit mission, and that can become uh, questionable. The other is that uh, governments will often abdicate responsibility now that they feel that people in the social space are actually taking over some of the responsibility for different uh, problems that we face. So things like privatization of water. And in the US right now, especially in Detroit, water, municipal water, is being privatized. And is that really a good thing? It might be, but it's risky. And we don't know if that should be the case. Um, traditional charities are being demonized and facing huge legitimacy challenges. So one of the biggest transformations I've seen in some of the research we're doing in philanthropy is that traditional charities as we know them are now having to become like businesses. And I'm not sure that's also a good thing or even appropriate. And one of the most interesting um, findings that I've come across recently about unintended negative consequences was research that's been done at the University of Toronto by um, Mazar and Zhang, and in their research they've done is that they find that there's a rise of unethical behavior following green consumption. So let me tell you about this. So if people buy green products, it gives them a license after they've done something good to lie, cheat, or steal, right? And that's amazing. And they found this is across a number of studies. It's a very robust finding. And I find it really, really interesting is that what gives people that license to do something bad after you've done something good. Professor Tina Dawson has done a lot of research on dark side theories and case studies. And in this talk, she has done a lot of research on some of the research. After watching this video, in the next module, we will recap Professor Dawson's talk's main points और उसमें से लेसन्स लर्न या कंक्लूजन्स ड्रॉ करने की कोशिश करेंगे थैंक यू